back on each other. And that's how the universe learns about itself. It's because there is a fundamental feedback in the structure of space. And consciousness is just that. It's self-awareness. It's feedback. And so I think it starts to give us a good foundation to actually have a quantitative and, you know, analysis of the uh, structure of consciousness and, and how the universe learns about itself, how it self-organizes and how, you know, I mean, the amazing, uh, you know, organization and, and coordination that we see in our universe that cannot be explained by mere, you know, random function. No, and the whole notion of creating order out of chaos, there have to be certain organizing principles That's that create right. coherence. That's right. And so this is where most people's ears perk up a little bit, is how do you create coherence? How do you create? Mm -hmm. How do we create both collectively and individually? And this, what you're talking about has, it is the basis of the creation process. That's right. Uh, you know, it's the basis of the understanding of the dynamics of the creation process and then the application of that into our life every day uh, can have a very, very deep meaning. Let's start talking about that because <clears throat> I think that's where all of us live. We're seeing the world around us, not just the world of physics, changing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are being very unseated by it. Those who are prepared are already becoming coherent in their own lives and understanding of what's coming up and how to deal with it. Yeah. So let's let's talk about that. Um, off camera we were talking about the notion of uh, focus persistent desire and whatever kind of plasmic effect that may have, however that goes into yes. programming, coalescing, making coherent right. an outcome and the principles you're talking about and just go for it. We, you, can, you can even start with synchronicity um, as really a, kind of a silly little word on one level. Right. Um, well, you know, I think that <laughs> synchronicity is actually evidence of this self-organizing system. And, 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 you know, some people think of it as some god or god organizing creation. Some people think of it, you know, as, uh, you know, spirit and many other things. In What I'm doing, I'm starting to actually pinpoint the dynamics of that self-organizing agent. And, and, uh, and it, it turns out that it, it seems to be the vacuum itself, that the, that, you know, the space between you and I, the space be inside the atom is not empty. It's full of all the information that's radiated into it. And then it's fed back to us as our experience of reality. And so better we become at, um, you know, focusing our intention in uh, feeding the information to the vacuum of our intention in the most focused way and clear way, then easier it is for the vacuum to feed back an experience that matches closer and closer uh, what we want. And I think that the level of synchronicity increases, at the, you know, and it's, it's noticeable. Uh, because it becomes easier and easier for the vacuum to like feed back, for the universe to feed back uh, what we desire. Now, uh, essentially uh, manifestation is what you're talking about Manifestation, yeah. that's right. But it is always a balance between your internal interpretation and uh, what the universe is feeding you back. It's always a little bit different because whenever you feed information to the vacuum, whenever you feed information to the universe, then it's modified by all the rest of people that are feeding information to the universe. And it's coordinated so that we all live in the same consensus reality. You know, people say, you create your reality. Well, if everybody, everybody created their own reality, nobody <laughs> would meet. Right. It would be very lonely. <laughs> you know, everybody would be in their own reality by themselves. Right. So there is a consensus, there's a relationship so that, so that you can, you know, focus on what you want and the, va the universe is going to feed you back, the vacuum is going to feed you back something close to what you want but that is coordinated with everybody else's intention. With the collective. And it with makes the sense. Collective. Yes, right. that makes total sense. So, so there's a relationship, there's a dance. And I think that you know, even in this paper that I just published, which is a technical paper, 
if you read between the lines, you start to realize the atoms that I'm made of, which is billions and billions of atoms, we're made out of a hundred trillion cells, you know, each cell is made out of billions of atoms. And so you can imagine, like, all these little mini black holes. I mean, this is what this paper says, is that each one of these things are mini black holes, teeny weeny black holes that are spinning at near the speed of light, very, very close to the speed of light. And that, you know, um, you know, and it gives meaning as well to the concept that we are light, you know, um, and that, w that the way into the vacuum, the way into the capacity to influence deeper and deeper uh, and, and more uh, uh, accurately the structure of the vacuum is to actually go inwards towards that singularity inwards towards that point of absolute stillness where all spins cancel out at the center of singularity. Now say, explain that in a practical sense, in, in the process of creation, for example, where, say, you have a focused desire. Mm -hmm. and now, let's the play, tendency yeah. is to try to focus it outside yourself, but really what's necessary is to, um, you know, use techniques of meditation or contemplation or so on, to actually go inside yourself towards the infinitely small. To, you know, people say, I have a hard time visualizing infinity. Well, usually that's because they're trying to visualize infinitely big. But if they contain the infinitely small, then they have access to the infinite, through the infinitely small. And so to turn the senses inwards, which happens to be what most of the masters that walk the earth have been trying to tell us throughout the ages, and to actually go towards singularity, towards the infinite potential inside each one of your atom, and then to have like a directed, you know, um, information network, you know, to have access to the information network and directed in a way that will fulfill, mo you know, our deepest desires, uh, you know, I think becomes very, very powerful. So now we start to see a physical route, a physical way, a mechanical way to actually have more and more influence on the vacuum and transform our world to more and more of what we want. So let's say we've gone in through that process. Mm. We're, we're mastering that with our persistent focused desire. Yeah. And we're taking it into the most infinite level inside our own being, going inward. Yeah. Let's talk about the process from your model, and, and, and you can for lay people, obviously, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> as to what happens to create what would almost be perceived as a step-down process through layers or fields of density to right. create something that has now become, you know, our physical reality, part of our physical reality. I call it And like, I know you're talking perceptions as well as reality, so right. that whole thing, take off on it. Well, you know, I call it uh, vacuum engineering, uh, and it's, uh, you know, you could apply it to literally engineering devices in laboratory or you could apply it to uh, you know a, an individual becoming more and more aware of the exchange that's constantly occurring between them and the vacuum you know an atom is made out of 99.9999999 percent space so when people say what are you talking about about the vacuum I'm I'm telling them literally about that I'm talking about them you know because you are 99.99999. So, like, what you experience as yourself is actually point zero 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 one of a percent of what's actually there. But it's a strong illusion, holographic illusion. That is, absolutely. And, and that's what I'm trying to get people aware of, is that the space is actually what produces the material world. And so to become aware of that, and to become aware of the exchange that's constantly occurring between you and between what you call the material world that you're made of and the space. And that everything all around you in your environment, you know, biological or not, is constantly exchanging to start to become aware of that world. Uh, starts to put you in a position of being able to alter it, to be able to modify it, and to, you know, become what I call a vacuum engineer and start to transform it in a way that can 
produce the most positive effect in your life. Uh, you know, including to discover, you know, what some people may call your dharma, you know, your, your mission, wh what, you know, what you're here to do, you know, how to do it, and so on. I mean, lots of inspiration, lots of information can come from that. Because you're feeding the vacuum, but as well the vacuum is feeding you back. So if you become more aware of it, it's like all of a sudden the little voice is not so little anymore. You're hearing clearer and